Tonight we have an update on the CRV well from Jim Morris, an Alpine Environmental. Um, then I want to talk about something with garbage, and then we just have to pass a resolution for a training course. So um, without further ado, um, Jim, I'm going to open the report to you. I asked Jim to come in and just kind of give us an update. I know that him and Trustee Matthews are working very hard on different approvals and stuff, but I thought it would be helpful for this board to get him in and all uh, and ask questions. Well, you're, you're about to get another approval in the mail. Uh, ah. The DC permit is written. Oh my God! And we are waiting for the. Um, oh, did you get that on film? Hallelujah! We're waiting for the uh, <laughs> regional permit administrator to come back from vacation and, uh, and sign it. So what that will do? There are really three elements to what's been going on here. Uh, one is the pump house and the water main which is all three. And the second is what we call a water taking permit, a water supply application, uh, which is now the permit is written and will be issued shortly. You know, yeah. still a little bit yeah. Um so I'll, I'll talk about that permit first. Um, basically what the DEC did here is um, you know we filed application for the two wells out here at Crystal Run Village. Uh, <clears throat> together pumping 850,000, roughly, but I think it's 868, but 868,000 gallons of uh, water a day. They were ready to um, issue that a year and a half ago, and then what they wanted to do was wrap in our reservoirs, prospecting Green Hill, because we were over, and they're doing this, you know, you find this with everything. When the economy goes down, the DC, their enforcement and fines go up and all that. So we were taking more water from the reservoirs on a daily basis and had been since the 80s that they were permitted for. So that went around a long time and Art was at one of the meetings at DC with Pippin and myself. And after a lot of you know watershed analysis, we have less than a square mile of watershed for each of these reservoirs uh, individually, whereas the watershed that, that serves the wells is about 11 square miles. So you have a lot more potential to extract water there than there. But we convinced the DEC that uh, you know the Crystal Run water is a, I'll call it more expensive water. You have to pump it. It doesn't come into the village by gravity. The infrastructure isn't there operating and so forth. So the permit that you're going to receive increases the permitted taking from Prospect and Green Hill together from it essentially almost doubles it. 700 40 or 50,000 now, it's going to up it to a million three. So, so current reservoirs. Right. So when you're flush with water, uh, they wanted it balanced, so you took an equal amount from both sides at all times. Honestly, that's a waste of money. Why pump from Crystal Run if you're a year yeah. like this, it's been wet, and you have much cheaper water from the reservoirs? So that's what we've been going around with them for actually a year. And they finally saw it our way after you know multiple go rounds of responses to their comments. So that's the wait, 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 before you go on. Before you go on, let me just say that that is no small thing. Uh, we had been taking from the reservoir to service this village for decades, and suddenly they came up with the concept that we were taking more than was what was permitted 40 years ago, and so we now had to deal with yet another new issue. And it was no easy convince to say, okay, we've been taking from here for all this time. Obviously, it can support this time in a wet year. We don't need to go to taking from CRV unless we are, in, you know, in need. And uh, it took a lot to get them to acquiesce to that. And now go on. I'm here okay, to that's, the side that's, you know, that's it. it took a lot of work. Yeah, that, but that's really it. You're now... Um, you can really optimize your water resources. Take it from the reservoirs when it's available. Use Crystal Run when you have to. Um, you're now, you know, your average daily use in, in the summer goes over a million. Still, in most of the nine months of the year, it's under a million. You know, you now have permitted sources totaling 2.1 million. Hallelujah. So you got Hallelujah. lots of water to spare for the first time in 100 years. Is that 2.1 factor in? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, that's where that stands. We've had nothing more to do on that. Once the permit, sorry, just to, to be clear, so after these are online, 100 percent, the village will be able to produce two million gallons a day. Well, no, you have to balance. You have that much permitted sources. You still 
Uh, I think their maximum taking that they'll allow you to use in a day, you can't sell water outside the district. The permit's going to be so structured. So uh, you have to go back and, and modify the permit. But but to simplify it, the, 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 the deal is that if the water is in the reservoir, which is a million, just to give it a round number, a million a day, you use that. If you are running lower, then you go to the CRV well. You can't combine the two because if you're going to the CRV well, you are less than flush in the reservoir. Right. So you cannot combine the two and say that's what we can produce. Right. One is a backup for the other. You could take you could take a million three on an a, you know average over the whole year. You take a million three. But that's way more than you ever use. And if your usage goes up. Um, that still, you can still, as long as it's within the district, you can still take up to the whole, you know, if it goes to a million four, a million five, that's not an issue. As long as I you're taking it from the sources that are permitted. One has to keep in mind that before the CRV wells were developed, what we had was simply the reservoir, and we had that for a hundred years. And so when we ran dry, we had to hook up to Florida, because there was no other source. Now, with the development of the CRV wells, what we have is not running out to provide for those we have here. That's what it provides. If we're running low in the reservoir, thank God we now have the CRV wells. And that's what we're going to be permitted to take so that we will be able to service our people in time of drought or not. We have the backup. It is not uh, a combination of the two to reach two million. It right. is making sure that you have the one million plus that's necessary. All right, but let's go back to the question. Right. Yeah. In essence, we would be able to produce two million gallons of water a day. They Maybe won't let you plus. take that. No, but I'm saying that's, that's, yeah. that's, what, that's what we basically have. That's, that's your, your we can only take 1.3. Right. right. Before this, your your permit was, for well number one, was, you know, 300 and... 40 some thousand a day plus the um, prospect and green held together were in the 700 range so your, your total was a, was only a million before now it's over two. So but I need to be very clear on this that uh, the need to take is the kickoff. The need to take is the kickoff. We are not entitled to take two million. No, I'm just curious okay. about I how just much. need that on the and record. I mean, we're not stupid. We understood that. No, the first I time. understand. Right. It's just that I want everybody to be clear. And I also expect that there will be permit conditions. If you have, and if there are any that are onerous, you have 30 days to file a formal, you know, uh, <coughs> objection after the permit is issued. But they want a balance. Uh, to protect, you know, the limited fisheries resources and everything else, and other down gradient, um, you know, Arcadia's water source comes from the Green Hill watershed, let's call it. So the permit is going to come with a balancing of the sources, so that you're never going to pump prospect down to minus 120. Okay. Right. The the wells are going to have to come on long before that. Sure. And and I understand the mathematical component that you just went over, I understand all that. But just to be clear, the DEC has said they're never going to allow us to sell water to an outside user? That's, that was a... Or was that a determination that the village made? No, that was a DEC uh, permit condition in the last permit, even for the first well. That is kind of a standard condition that they put in permits, um, you know, to so limit... When was that permit? Uh, oh... Okay. And that was the reason I wanted to be clear. This isn't uh, a, a question of what one wants or what doesn't want. This is a question of we can produce so much in a good flush here at the reservoir, and as backup we have these wells. We are not allowed to use that until this is in trouble, until this is in trouble. So you can't look upon it as being able to produce, produce two million. It's not me. It is the DEC is saying, if times are such that your reservoir is going down, then you can call on these wells. But you cannot. They are your backup. I understand. But if that's an issue that needs clarification, we have uh, that time period to talk to the DC about that. Right. Thirty well, days. I, I I ask about it, and you know, and I understand what they were saying. But right now, the village is in a position where we're paying higher sewer rates than we would like to because the village alone is covering the cost of a brand new sewage treatment plant. <coughs> so this just kind of scares me now that we can't 
something over our excess water if we, you know, that we It's not access, and that's why I'm trying to be very clear about it. It's not ac access, and it's not just in my eyes. It is in the DEC's mm -hmm. eyes. DEC this is not access. The CRV wells were uh, developed in order to provide us with a water source. If you can uh, look at, and I'm sure you're totally aware, all of you, of the time that we went through that drought from hell, uh, there was a question of there being no water. And yeah. the CRV was, and we were literally I down understand. to no water. Uh, that this is, these are allowed to be developed in order to give us that backup that is necessary to service the people we already sure. have. And this is not you know, order, order of magnitude, um, the DEC would be unlikely to modify the permit to allow you to sell, I'll throw a number out there, 400,000 gallons a day to some major, mm -hmm. say someone wants to do an industrial facility of some kind in the town, okay? Not likely. If you want to go outside the village, say, to provide water in the town to some kind of homeowners, say, you know, the situation out near the town garage where you have homeowners that are impacted. Right. Oh, yeah. You, the D.C. approved that in a flash. So it, it's really an order of magnitude question. You know, right. 10,000, 20,000, you know, very doable. Uh, half a million gallons a day to some private entity. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. So. But so we can sell to outside users, though. They have not said so. You'd have to modify your permit. And you'd have to okay. identify to them who and, and the scale. Okay. I would urge us to get this approved before we... Oh, I understand. I've been working on this for so many years that, that I would urge us to get this yeah, approved to service sure. our existing let's, patrons. Let's understand what our limitations are before we spend any more money on it. And, let's, and honestly, some of this comes from the village way back because in the old three, four, five time frame when the first permit was being written, you know, what, what the village didn't want to do, we made sure that it was for transmitting raw water only to these couple of water districts that are in the town that are along the route. Um, you know, the village patently at that time did not want to get in the business of taking on those water districts. So that it, it, part of the history is also from the village. Mm -hmm. So that's that. You know, as soon as uh, you know, the permit will probably come here with a copy to me, uh, probably a copy to Art and Goodman. So as soon as we get that, we should all read it. And Hallelujah! Uh, there a long any, way, uh, a long way. Conditions that are unbearable. Let's put it that one. Um, so that's that. And then the uh, yeah, well, I think we're good. Um, the um, other aspect of what had been working on are the pump house and the transmission main. The pump house is all approved by state health, so that's done. You can really uh, build that at any time. But the, the linchpin in the whole uh, uh, water main, as you know, from um, from the bridge over the Walker right. River, which is right here, yeah. um, all the way into the village, we buried that water main during the emergency, or <coughs> after the emergency, we buried the portion in the village during the emergency. Uh, and then I want to say that contract was in 07 into 08 uh, for Metro Industries. That about 2.2 or 3 miles is a million, million six to bury that water line. Uh, the portion at the bridge uh, is essentially here's the site, okay, uh, comes, here's the well house, the line comes down, goes over onto the barren. So, then it comes through our easement on the barren. Uh, this is what was originally approved by the health department. Um, to a valve here with an, uh, let's see, provision for an emergency tie into the town of Wallkill. The Wallkill water plant is right here. If they ever had an emergency situation where, um, you know, they were in trouble and you were flush, you could provide them with water. So, what was part of the original deal? Right, so from here, this valve box right here, all the way back to the village, that's that's already underground. Um, what happened with the bridge is kind of a long story, and I'll condense it, but in the 02-03 uh, drought, um, the county, you know, reviewed our plans to, uh, you know, get the emergency pipe across. They, uh, our structural guy, uh, Charlie Brown, uh, 
of work on designing bridge hangers that would um, work on the existing bridge. As it turned out, the bridge uh, structure wasn't adequate to uh, it was already in such a state of decay we couldn't use those, so we strapped a pipe to the bridge. The initial um, take on the bridge that the county was going to design at that time, we would have still been able to use the hangers and put the pipe under the bridge, okay, and then insulate the sleeve. And just so you know, to the, the bridge goes from here to here, but the river is only half of that span. The balance of it is just very flat floodplain. So really, this, this is dry land, most of the, except when the walk hill floods and, and the pipe comes up there. It would only really be on half of the bridge, the half that's over the river. So I want to say in the 05 time frame, the county um, moved away from designing the bridge themselves, decided to go with the contractor, and also decided that um, they would prefer that we not hang our pipe on their bridge because it would they be more than prefer. They said you, you will not hang it on. So the, the head bridge guy, Ron Meyer from Orange County, you know, we met Marcia and myself out on the site, right there, and he said, what we want you to do is, you know, stay in our right of way, but do a directional bore under the river where you uh, essentially drill, have a drill rig that drills diagonally under the river and it pops up on the other side and you pull a sleeve back that you can put the pipe to. In their right of way. Right, within their right of way. So, um, you know, we brought Club Harbor in to work on that. They did that design. It was incorporated by um, Ross from, from EP, the uh, civil engineer for the water line. Uh, and that was then subsequently all approved by State Health. So then we did everything we were supposed to do. Right. We have that approval in hand. Then a year and a half ago, the county came back to us and said, you know, now we've, we've let the contract for a bridge design, but we're going to have a bridge design that won't allow you to be on the downstream side. You have to move either, you have to move to the upstream side. So that gave me a major migraine because basically it was the county that directed us to be on the downstream side. And I know, you know, because I do a lot of canoe racing and I paddle the river a lot, there's a ridge of bedrock right upstream here that I was worried about we might not be able to get uh, through with our direction for. So we've been working with the county for a year and uh, more. And this is their map now. Uh, um, what they're going to do for, for the new bridge. And um, grab my pen, sorry. My yeah. So, I'm going to build this bridge before I die. No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. This, this bridge is supposed to be up in, <laughs> in, in, <laughs> in, 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 in O2. So it all, it all boils down to the money. When they can get the federal money, the bridge is going to be built. Um, so, anyway, this is our the stash line that you see here is our existing design. Okay. There are some issues with that because the new, this is the existing bridge abutment, these wing shaped abutments that you see. On this side, the new abutment is going to be straight, so for whatever reason. And it's being designed by WSP Cells, one of the biggest transportation and engineering companies in the country. So the county is going to actually have to um, either condemn or purchase new real estate right there in order to be able to build this bridge. That's a little problem for us because if we do a directional bore from here, say we extend our water main to there, okay, we can't get past that wing wall and into their real estate on a straight line because this this land here is owned by others. So we met with the county the last time, which was about a month ago or so, and they had another plan which was for us to directional bore from here before the bridge is built and dead end it right up here against the head wall of the existing bridge. And wait. And that's a very steep bank. So before they begin construction and demolish this bridge, we would dead end the pipe. Then after they obtain this real estate, we would then come up outside their limits of construction and around and tie back in to the that's actually their water valve right there. Okay. So we had to do a couple things to see if that was feasible. First of all, we got the county map and the topo was all wrong. They had uh, topo lines coming out into the river for no reason and it took us, you know, a couple weeks to sort that out. What we've done now, we just actually finished that on Friday, is we are sending 
the repaired map with what the county wants to see back to Clough Harbor with the borings. The county actually, their, their contractor did, did uh, borings along both sides of the riverbank to check on the feasibility of building this new bridge. So right now, that is being shipped up to Clough Harbor to see if a directional bore in the line, along the lines of what the county is thinking is feasible. And if they say it's feasible, we're going to all come back to you and say we want, you know, we want you to <coughs> have us draw those plans, do the uh, environmental, and get it reapproved by the health department that way. Um, and you're going to have to. I think the bridge design is far enough along now that it's the first time they've actually moved the design through to a to a final design. So I, I don't see them backing away from that. There might be timing issues on when it gets built, but if your pipe is in the ground and under the river, you might have to wait a little longer. But if they did agree, uh, also you should know, they're going to build a temporary bridge over here. Okay. And then demolish everything there. So they have agreed that, you know, our pipe can stay here until this bridge goes up. Then we can move our pipe, you know, because if this construction takes more than a season, you don't want to be without your emergency exactly. water source if you need it. So they're going to design that temporary bridge to accommodate our pipe. And so if we have to, we'll move it over there and then hang it. Right. And then when their bridge is all built, come in. This real estate has been obtained. Come in and hook up like that. And I, I, I would like to commend uh, Jim's patience because I have to tell you that this sounds like it happened in two weeks, but in fact it took three years. But you know that's where we are really now. Um, we're now that we have the map straightened out. It's not we're not doing anything. We're going to wait to hear from Clough Harbor and then go back to you. Yeah, it sounds like that's not you're doing. There's a lot of ifs there. Yeah, I mean you know who you can't make this stuff up. You know no, they keep changing. We buy the hangers. I know how you're doing. They just keep changing on you. So there's right. a lot of ifs. However, I, I have to say that I uh, uh, went directly to Diana on two occasions. And in both those instances, for whatever reason, maybe just because you bang heads together and everybody was in the same room, uh, and pointed out the fact that we have been put through this ringer on several occasions, uh, that we've had a far more cooperative attitude. Yeah, you know, when we pointed out that the bridge hangers that you bought in 03 are still sitting, are down still in my sitting there, so we, we're all ready to hang them off your. <laughs> Pretend bridge while you when you demolish this one because we've certainly been directed to do so by the county on a couple of occasions and made the point of course that for uh, a small village they have to go through this kind of expense in order to accommodate the change in design three different times is absurd. Yeah. So, you know, once we hear something from Cluck, we'll get it right to Art and Pippin and you and see where we go from there. I think we where, find the county far more do you think we would be going? I mean, once we can actually, the, the piping is permanently in, pla in place, what about treatment? Well, <coughs> you know, there's a treatment. The original plan was to do green sand filtration on the triangle across from high school. Okay. And uh, Pippin and Gandhi designed that plan. It was reviewed by State Health. They gave comments back. At that time, <coughs> the village board decided to suspend any work on that. So really, you know, I think uh, I, yeah, we're more in the water supply aspect, but I certainly think there are some things you want to look at. You know, your your water plant, uh, you know, it's gonna, it has a certain lifespan to it, and um, you know, you may want to look at just when you need to build a new one, pumping all of that water up to. It comes down to, to you know, a, a decision primarily between two directions. One to build a plant to treat there, or since we already have to upgrade our plant, that we pipe it over to there and upgrade and treat the water from there as well. Right, and that's a which is something that I've always thought was the most intelligent. So we're, in, we're moving up to the concept of having to approach that issue now. Now that we have to deal with all of this. And you know the water when we were using the well in the emergency, the water got a bad rap because its quality has iron and manganese. Okay, we experiment with different methods to treat for that. Really, the best method is the green sand filtration. And you know, as an example, Wallkill 
treats, I don't know, three, four million gallons a day of this same water. That's exactly it what they're the water. So, you know, it's a high quality source, it's just different than the source you have. And, you know, whether you, uh, you know, build at some point in the future a new treatment plant that will handle it all better, or you build a little plant out here across from the school bus garage, you know, that's a feasibility study at that time. But, you know, I think just from an operational point of view, you want to get over this hump of getting this done, your pump house done, secured in the woods, all those things before you move on to the next step. Because that is getting it approved as our emergency source. And then you move on to what you want to do for the future. Wouldn't the, the planning for that, you know, should we probably start sooner than later, right? Well, is, it's never too soon to start thinking about it. I mean, the, some of the good news is, uh, and Biffin was working on, you know, uh, experimenting with sequestering agents to treat this iron and manganese. You can either filter it out in a green sand filter or precipitate it out, or you can lock it up chemically through a sequestration process. And there are different, um, you know, phosphate-based chemicals that will do that. And the good news is, you know, there are new ones coming out all the time. So to, you wouldn't necessarily want to make a decision today uh, if a better chemical came out next year. So you, you really want to take it one step at a time. I think with the flushing, uh, sequestering, and the flushing regimen that Mike worked out, uh, you know, basically some sediment would, would get caught in the line, but if you run the well for five or six days and then flush it, you get another five or six days to clean, you know, beautiful water. So that's a way you can manage it, um, short of, you know, investing all the money in that treatment plant across in the bus garage because, you know, again, it's a second facility. There's more maintenance, there's more staffing, there's more cost, everything. And if you just did a booster pump station, you know, that's automated, you know, uh, online, can be remotely controlled from the water plant, you, you have a lot less staffing and, and things to deal with. So, And you're only at this point calling on it in the emergency service. Right. You can't use this on an everyday basis until the final pump house is built and all the mains buried. Will they let us forever use it as an emergency source and not building a pump house and a new treatment line? They'll start to give you problems with that over time. We have to build the so pump. We have to build. build yeah. Well, we have yeah. to build the pump house. Yeah. Yeah. We have to be to able that. to treat and the pump house, which we already have covered. Yeah. 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 about a half million for the pump house. Is that right? Yeah, I mean the the, um, the sequestering is is one form of treatment, and the green sand filter is the other. The sequestering is relatively inexpensive. That's what we do now. Yeah, well, yeah. Right, that would be what we do right. now. I and that's, that's, that's sequestering that has been approved, right? yeah, and that's been approved by the health department, and, right. and it's part of the pump house design to have that sequestering done at, at the pump house. Okay. So once that's in place, um, I think it's no longer an emergency uh, well source; it's a it's a, it's a source of water. Uh, sequestering is an acceptable means of treatment. It's not the preferred means, but it's it, it's it's one that probably makes the most sense because we're not using the water on a regular basis. Uh, again, it's being used on an emergency pur purpose, but I think we're we're kind of uh, uh, you know calling it different names at different times. It, it will be, I think, ultimately an, an, ex an acceptable source of water for any purpose. It doesn't have to be an emergency. Right. They probably would like us to use it more often than not uh, to supplement the reservoirs, uh, to kick it on and use it and, and use the reservoirs less. But when we do that, it costs us money. And that's why the sequestering is probably the better way to go at this point in time because it's it's a relatively inexpensive way to treat the, the water. Um, but at some point, we're going to have to take a look at what makes the most sense long term. Uh, but this would get us past this the uh, you know running around uh, trying to figure out where our water is coming from. We, we will have a source of water that's that's approved in terms of volume, that's approved in terms of treatment, and will be there basically at the flip of the switch to, to get the water into the system. And we don't have to go to the health department to get approval as we do now. But you will have to you will have to build the pump house and bury the line. That we know. And they probably, you know, say there's a hiccup in the bridge issue. I think if you had your pump house built and the line was buried up to here and you were still monkeying around on the on the emergency bridge uh, crossing, I I think they'd still allow you to use it on a daily basis because you're only talking a few hundred feet. Um, 
And, and in my opinion, and it's only my opinion, you gentlemen certainly made the comment, when we're talking about long-term, we're not talking about next week or next year. When we're talking about long-term decisions that have to be made, we're talking about making plans for 10 and 20 years down the line in the village. We're not talking about a year from now. A year from now, we have, as Jim just said, even if there is a hiccup with this, and we get held up even longer by the county with this, we're going to be made whole. But uh, when we're talking about the long term, what does the village of Goshen have to do for its water supply? We're not talking about a year from now. We're talking about a decade from now. Right. I'm not saying that we shouldn't face into it. I'm right. simply saying it's not tomorrow. And you know, we can't afford it tomorrow. Right. Well, not only can we afford it, but it's not necessary tomorrow. Right. And for a hundred years, it was what are we going to do for it water? It was. That's over. Now, how are we going to treat it? Starts to become a question that a little easier to deal with. You know. The uh, hair pulling and the getting cut off by Florida and all those things, you, you, you pass that now. Oh, absolutely. This is absolutely a good thing, and I appreciate both your hard work on this. Um, I just want to make sure that we're doing everything, you know, to make sure that we don't get into another situation like we have with the sewer plant, where, we're, you know, we have capacity that we want to get rid of and we want to use, but, you know, it's tough thing about the cost. So I'm just and, uh, well, then I hope it's very clear to everyone because this really has been such a long haul. Question. You had made a mention that uh, there was a valve that was there <coughs> for, the, for Walk Hill mm -hmm. for a down in the case mm -hmm. of emergency. Right. And they have a water treatment plant there at Walk Hill, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And so what would be the feasibility of approaching them and running a pipe mm -hmm. from there, since the valve's already heading in that direction, where it kills two birds and one stone, they have access to the water. It's already piped in there without an emergency laying pipe. And then if we would need it, they could treat the water and send it to us. In fact, I had that conversation with Ed Smith, who I went to high school with, was the head of the Walk Hill treatment plant. And uh, we brought up the issue. Walk Hill was not in favor of getting involved on that level. They wanted to make sure, and, and as did the DEC want to make sure, that because it is very close to the same feed tank uh, of water, that we would, in case of emergency, if we were still flush, would not, I wouldn't rely on that happening is the best way for me to say it, since it's, it's not right. far away. Uh, they weren't interested at the time. It's certainly something we could uh, We could reopen that door. Well, I mean, as of tomorrow, they're going to have a new supervisor elected. Exactly. Now. I know. And I mean, maybe even it's if it's something that, uh, I, I mean, because, I mean, their benefit is, is one, if they have the pipe already ran there, yeah. so that if they need the water, they can access it, right? For whatever could happen there, their aspects of it. So it's a safe backup for them. But also, uh, what it's not, as we've discussed, we're not going to use it every day, or it's not going to be a, 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 a thing it's used as a backup source for water when the reservoirs are, are, are you know, with the original, the, the, if you're wise, the original deal was so that there was cooperation from Walk Hill and there was no objection from our developing the wells there, was that in case of emergency, right. uh, something happened to theirs and they, the, the pipe, major pipe well, broke and they were in trouble. Well, also, you know, a couple things here. Their, their first impression when we first developed this well, <laughs> or wells, was, hey, you're putting your straw in our drink. Right. Okay. Right. The wells are, your wells are in the town of Walker. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we demonstrated hydrogeologically that they're not connected. Now, it's a, you know, it's a whole different system. Um, but they were, you know, they gave a subdivision and site plan approval in one night. They waived the public hearing and all those they were things. They're very cooperative. They're very workable on getting the pump house approved and all that. Um, and part of the bone that we threw them was the emergency of growth. But at the time, um, they, their water treatment capacity was operating very close to the red line. Mm -hmm. But they've since then built a new water plant. And I don't know, you know, I could, I could talk to Lou and Grassi, who is the uh, superintendent now, about whether that scenario could work now. Because now they have other treatment, more treatment capacity elsewhere in the system. Right. So, uh, you At know. the time it wasn't workable. Maybe it's a wise idea to reapproach. It was also something, it's just something to look at. Sure. Even if it had to be some kind of an agreement where it's potentially a lease agreement type thing where I mean we have to pay 
if we use it, we have to pay X, Y, and Z or something sure. like that. It's probably in the long run a sure. lot less expensive than building a place and, right. and doing all of that and add employees and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we just, quite honestly, until this, until we got this permit that is now being written, it wasn't. You know, we weren't ready to make the next step. Sure. I can't. You know, when, when this comes through, I will buy drinks for the board. <laughs> I don't drink, so well, we can. Uh, I can dig into that a little bit with the phone. Yeah, it's just something to look at. I mean, to me. Well, I know that in the last county um, water board they put out, they encouraged sharing with the ocean and wall. Right, right, sure. mm -hmm. So, okay. yeah, good point. And, and so you know, your aquifer is enough better than theirs because during the drought, uh, that was the worst in '65, we were in constant contact with Eddie Smith and. Our wells and theirs are about the same depth, but they had to closely monitor their wells for drawdown because they were in danger of burning out their pumps. They were drawing the aquifer down 40 feet, and we were pumping full and I stay plus. for five months, and we only pumped down 14 feet. So ours is, you know, they're good well superior good in well. terms of how much water the aquifer will transmit. It's got bigger aggregate in the aquifer. Ali, what do you get? Thanks for that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when we hear back, we get the permit, we'll report back, we hear from Clux on the feasibility, we'll report back. I'll talk a little about that, that, that the concept of treatment and report yes. back. Is anyone else have any questions? No. Thank you, right, thank you very much. Okay. It's very informative thank and you. keep up the good work. All right, so next thing I want to talk about tonight, I, I mentioned it a few weeks back, doing the budget stuff, uh, crunching numbers, it's very clear that we need to find ways to cut costs before our budget season. Um, I talked uh, a few weeks ago about actually pri privatizing garbage pickup, putting, or putting it out to bid. Um, I did some research, and we paid roughly 300000 every year for garbage pickup, um, which isn't a bad number compared to others. The town of Chester put their garbage pickup out to bid, and they're paying, thank you, they're paying $17 a household per month. So if we round our number up and say there's 2,000 homes in the village, under that rate they got, we'd be paying 400000 a year, which is more than we're paying now. Um, the question that was raised, though, is oh, if we put out to bid, can we potentially get a better rate? Because the village is a lot more compact. It would take less time, less gas to get all, everything picked up. Okay. Um, so the, I wanted to bring to the board the concept. And it's something we can talk about tonight. We'll have to decide tonight. But whether we want to put it out to bid, see what kind of numbers we get back in, and then make a determination after that. Because, for example, if we put it out to bid, the low bid was Seventeen dollars a ton, like Chester got, then it wouldn't be cost effective because it's more we pay now. But if we put it out to bid and maybe the low one was thirteen a ton, for example, which you know would work out to some number of way less than we're paying, then we could continue to have the conversation. How are we calculating what we're paying now? Uh, it's line items in the budget. We have um, our tipping fees annually, and we have uh, salary benefits and employees, repair and maintenance to the garbage truck, and uh, fuel costs. So it's just adding those line items together. And that includes the arrangement we have with the school then we have to factor <coughs> Yeah. Because they buy us, basically buy us a new garbage truck. Right. Yeah. So. That would include that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're getting, in the last fiscal year, we authorized the purchase of a garbage truck. And I think they're building that for us right now. So we'll have a new one soon. And basically what Mike said is if we were to go a privatization route, we would keep the garbage truck for things like, you know, whether it's uh, junk week or, you know. Well, right now, they, exactly. they've been using it for the storm. Right, so we would still have a use for it. You know, we have two, so we can sell one off and keep the newest one. So. Yeah, but my, but my question is that, that the when we're doing the analysis, that we make sure that we factor in the fact that we're oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. the garbage truck. Right, no, and that doesn't come out of the And I also want to leave them on the because they've been good to us. We've been a good yeah. relationship. So, but I just figured I'd bring it to the board and see what our thoughts were. If we wanted to put it out there, see what numbers came in, or if it's something we're not ready for yet. Now, I just got to get this straight in my mind, I think. Now, when we collect recyclables, 
we get compensated for that, correct? There is a company that does that, and we're working on the documents to put that out to bid. Okay. Right now, our single stream recycling goes to the county at zero cost. Okay. There's okay. a company that could pay, but we need to go through the bidding process. David's is putting together documents right now for that. Right. But right now, we, we're picking. I think we're, what Pete's getting to is we're picking it up. Yes. Right. What's yes. going to happen then? Who's going to pick it up? We that would be our decision. We could say we'll still do the recycling. We'll bring it in and we'll try to turn a profit on it. Or we could factor that into the bid and say we also want a single stream recycling and I do that would also cost. Right. We can also decide it when we put it out to bid we want a price for two days a week and we want a price for one day a week and see what the difference is between the two. I'd like to keep it at two days because that's what we're accustomed to, but we can look at the numbers and see what comes back. Sure. So. I don't I think we're screwed out the bid. Nothing's gonna not gonna hurt to get I mean numbers. we you know, we should definitely I mean see what somebody has to offer. I think that Kind of, uh, I think that we could cost save in a lot of ways with the current service that we have. For one, like I said, if it comes down to it, to go in one one day we pick up. Two, uh, we can encourage for in a number of ways we can encourage and or induce more recycling that doesn't cost us any money to get rid of the refuse. Um, to limit the stream. Yeah. I mean, because you think about it, I mean, there's roughly 2,000 village residents, right? Village no, homes. Or village no, homes, So if you, uh, uh, at, I'd say, 60 or 80 bucks maybe per per home, you're talking, I think, piece of change. But if you provided people with big recyclable containers, it says Village of Goshen, and it's owned basically by the village, but it's given to you as the homeowner, put out your recyclables in. And, you know, it's it's not only talked up, but enforced. You're, you're, you're going to eliminate a lot of, you're going to save, if it's $300,000 that we're paying now, which most of which is the tipping fee, mm -hmm. you could probably reduce that by $50,000, $60,000 in a year. Sure. And, in two years, you pay for the containers, which are permanent, and you, you're you're also uh, you know continuing to save over the long run over the years. But they take enforcement. Yeah, but yeah, I mean it takes enforcement, yeah. and it takes a resolution, and it takes a hundred dollar fine or two hundred dollar fine, fifty dollar seventy five dollar fine. You don't. Do it. Well, there's uh, there's different mechanisms. Absolutely, I agree. I think at the end of this fiscal year, we're going to see our tipping fees are hopefully. Go so quote me less than we budgeted on because of the uptick in single stream recycling. Right. And the budget that you talked about and all that. Um, we could also, if we wanted to go that route, purchase garbage canisters that are a certain size, give one per household, and say that's all we're going to pick up from you every week. Because right now we essentially pick up whatever's in someone's home. We're willing, we help right. them out, we take care of it. But if we were to standardize it and say, or look at it, you know, we, instead of us buying it, we're only going to take up to a 40 gallon jug twice a week or once a week. Then it would behoove that person to say, "All right, well, let me take this stuff out, so it fits, put it in the recycling, and keep the rest." Well, it, I, uh, uh, I, I, just I, that concept there, you just go, what's going to happen is, is you go find garbage, garbage on you, the street, you know, all, all over the place. Oh, you know, that's the I'm not saying that's the way to go. Dumping in the dumpsters at, at, at businesses downtown and dumping in the village things downtown. I mean, there's we we I think it's something we definitely have to explore, but we can figure a way. I think that there's methods if it's explored. I mean, unless somebody comes up and says it's like $200,000 a right. year to do it, then it's a no-brainer. Right. You could get out of the whole business altogether and don't have to worry about it, and you save employee costs and yada, yada, yada. But otherwise, I mean, if we're going to keep it, there's ways to reduce our costs in it. Right. Especially, like I said, limiting it to once a, a, a week. And, and i got to be honest, I, I recycle every week, but <coughs> I don't have enough garbage to put out twice a week. Mm -hmm. Once in a blue moon, mm -hmm. I would if if there and I got you know five people in my house. But I don't have enough garbage to put out twice a week. I mean it's nice, but to put out two small bags once a week or one on on Tuesday and one on Thursday. I, I mean it's really a luxury that that and 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 I I'm speaking on a family of five. It's a luxury that that we really don't need. And, I mean, you know, there are people that have more in their household than me, but, you know, not, not on an average. And it's too much 
to I, I don't have enough to put out twice. Sure. I think any analysis has always helped it. Uh, it you know, especially this year. And I think beyond that, though, I love having the pickup that we have. Uh, it's always good to look at the numbers, more current numbers, and see where we are. Uh, I would be hesitant about going in one direction or another until I had those results. So I think finding out the numbers is a healthy thing. I, I, I agree. I mean, obviously, it's only common sense. It's not going to hurt us. We'll get some bids and we can make up our mind. I, just echo what Pete said. He's made this point before. And the one end that he, he suggested that we've already done a little bit of education with people to let them know, look, you know, we have the single spring recycling and that that's helped. But he's also touched on, you know, at some point if we're going to be serious about recycling, he's absolutely right about the enforcement part. I'm exactly like him. I don't fill up a, a kitchen container, you know, garbage bag. I don't fill that up on a Tuesday when I put it out, but I just put that out. I could easily go once a week, but we all know when you're riding around, you know who's live in our neighborhoods, you know the people in your neighborhood, you know the people, how many people they have in their house <laughs> who have four garbage cans. Or had a party. You know, no, no, I mean on a regular basis have four garbage cans out on a Tuesday or Thursday. They can't be recycling. Yeah. And I don't think we have to be officious about it at the beginning, but if we are going to start to think about recycling, you can't have somebody kind of go around and look at all that knock on the door and say, you know, it is, you know, it's mandatory recycling and you, you know, you're not getting it done here. There was a time in the beginning when the county first started recycling that we were the most aggressive community in the county and we had a uh, trailer that divided. You couldn't go mingle at that point. You had to separate. We got the trailer. We went through everything to make sure we, we had the most aggressive program. And we really did cut down on the stream. Uh, then the the selling, the people who were buying the recyclables weren't making enough profits, so that closed down. And uh, Orange County went uh, flat on uh, their commingling, and they just wanted it all. I mean, on the separation, and they wanted it commingled. I think in our looking, <coughs> uh, there would be two things I'd be looking for. It would be one to limit the stream, and you can sell that, and there are stickers that are made, they use them in other communities, where you slap it on the garbage bill that says there are recyclables in here, please make sure that you are recycling in order yes. to try to elevate people's consciousness about the responsibility, and because then we do not end, end up paying for it, and it ends up allowing them to have better service. Uh, beyond that, I think, uh, I mean, I didn't want to get into detail. That's why I say get the numbers first right. and find out the cost of what we're talking about. Maybe there are ways. But I think limiting the amount of garbage you can put out for each, for a pickup, is a losing path. Uh, yeah, it's my mother in law it. comes to visit. Yeah, on the side yeah, of the highway. I mean, you're going to find it all over the place. Okay. You know? yeah. All I want to see is porch. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. No, thank you. Yeah. Um, and I mean, again, not to be a dead horse, but I just think that if we, if, it, if it's publicized more, emphasized more, we had talked about Senate mailing a card out, and I don't say we mail a card out for this specifically, but right. the next time we have something that we need to notify the public about, yeah. and that we need to send a card out, we need to add that to the card. Absolutely. If there's room available on the card. Or the mailing, that or the this, mailing, that, you know, in this mailing, sure. with bright arms, sticker. and um, you yeah. know, and you know, and and it's a, it's a no-brainer, zero fee as opposed to eighty dollars a ton for your garbage, oh, yeah. and this is your money that's paying for this. It's 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 the community's money. It's your taxes mm -hmm. that are paying for it. So it's a no-brainer. And I think when people get that concept in their mind, they look, you know, I mean, this would be my small part to do to try to help, you know, save things because I'm. If I turn my back, my kids will throw stuff in the garbage without me looking, and I'm making them dig it out, and help them get that out of there, and put it in a recycle. And you know, people are more conscientious about it. It 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 it, it can save a lot of money. Sure. I think people are far more conscientious now that it's commingled anyway. Yeah. It made their lives so much easier. They didn't have separation in their house, in in the kitchen. And I think a lot of people are far more easy and more comfortable with it. So I'm um, reading the board right that we want to put it out yeah, to, right. to see what numbers come back in and then do a determination from there. Talk about it. Definitely. It commits to nothing. But I mean, yeah, my, we can reject this. Absolutely. My 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 
point that I, I guess the, the whole point that I was saying was is if it's put out to bid, fine, but we still, if it doesn't, we need to go look at alternative aspects of trying to budget it better. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, save some money in, 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 the, in the course of it. We agree. Okay. Uh, last, just one quick thing, and then I'll open up if any other thing, the trustees have anything. We have um, Josh Bell and uh, Manuel Erlena are here, are going to be attending a uh, water conference. Yep. Uh, and then the timing is just such that we have to pass this at a work session. Normally we do this in the public meeting. Um, but just to get them, get them authorized on time, we need to do it tonight. Uh, so I'm just going to read it real quick. I'll ask for a motion. Manuel Orlena and Josh Bell will be attending the New England Interstate Water Pollution Control Commission Fall Training Course this November 9th and 10th in Fishville, New York. The total cost for both employees is $400. Participants must attend both days in order to be They keep, you know, improving their skills. So I'll ask for a motion. Um, uh, a second. Aye. All in favor of single finger say aye. 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 Uh, carries. That's all I had. Does anyone have anything to like? I have one little thing. Yeah. Well, I have a couple of things. Number one, uh, having served you at the dinner the other night when we were raising um, the funds for the out. farmers, and I know how many people in this community uh, participated. I just have to say that I think when people are given the opportunity, I think people wanted to do something. And there were so many people who came to that dinner, and my God, from the bake sale, they made $1,700. I mean, this was a beautiful, because the village of Ocean had its best, the community of Ocean had its best. Uh, and people wanting to do something to help each other. And they came over by making chili, by baking cakes, by uh, producing whatever was necessary and from showing up to eat. And there were so many people at the Episcopal Church. Meg, how many times did they have to bring out tables? There was no more room. And people waited in order for there to be a seat for them to come spend their money to support the effort. I was. It was just a very proud moment, and it was a beautiful thing to watch. A delicious dinner. Well, thank you. Well, I'll tell you, I, uh, I get to kind of caveat that. I wasn't able to get to the dinner because I had promised my son something in advance before the dinner was even thought of, so I had to follow through on that. But I did prepare quite a substantial amount of food that I brought over to the dinner, and... Uh, I had relatives that attended the dinner. My I daughter know. actually went to the dinner uh -huh. uh, and stuff. And uh, everybody echoed the same thing. And, and then, of course, we talk in the town at the restaurant is, is what, a, what a great thing it was, et cetera, and everything else. And I think just to take it one step further, I think that to, to give a little due to the churches as well, that they participated and collected money as well. Because uh, I know in talking with John on on uh, Saturday when I dropped off a lot of the food, which he was like, gosh, I don't know what we're going to do with all of this food because I had three big pans of lasagna. And I said, ah, you know, you're probably all right. And, and as it turned out, it was all needed. And, you know, because there, there was plenty of people that came to eat. Um, but uh, it, it was a, overall the whole fundraising aspect of it and... Uh, I watched a lot of people uh, went, as soon as they read the canister at, at Elsie's of what it was for. They went in their wallet and dug money in there. And so it was good. It was, it was wanting, wanting to help. And they found, you know, it, it, the way to give was created. It was beautiful to watch. Uh, All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye